Hello MCU fans, today we're going to look at the question of who or what exactly is the Intelligentsia. Now if you haven't watched She-Hulk episode 6, I recommend doing so first because there are some spoilers for the episode, but assuming you've watched it, let's dive right in and try to figure out who or what is the Intelligentsia in the MCU. Now, I like to think of them as the antithesis or the exact opposite of the Illuminati. If you remember, we met the Illuminati in Multiverse of Madness in the 838 universe, and it's basically a gathering of some of the smartest heroes um, to try to figure out you know, how to solve the big problems that no one else can, can address. And of course, they didn't last long, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, still, it was just a gathering of, of, of those superheroes to try to solve the big issues and big problems. The intelligentsia is the opposite. It's the criminal masterminds that have come together to, well, create the problems and issues that the Illuminati probably needs to end up solving, right? Uh, so it's the smartest criminal minds across the universe. So let's see what else we can learn about them. Uh, interestingly enough, all the way back in Age of Ultron, seven years ago, we learned a little bit about the Intelligentsia. Claw is listed as a former member of the group. So they have actually been established as being in the MCU way back in Age of Ultron. You know, leave it to Marvel to drop an Easter egg like that and then pick it up, uh, pick it up again seven years later. Wild. Uh, and in fact, it's in She-Hulk episode six that we hear about the Intelligentsia again. They have a website and one of the forums on there is about how do we kill She-Hulk? And it's kind of played for humor a little bit because there's some crazy entries in there, but still it raises a question of why would the Intelligentsia try to get some crowdsourcing information on how to kill She-Hulk? Well, it may be less about how to kill her and more about how to get her blood. You know, across all the episodes, one theme has been the importance of her blood. In the first episode, her blood actually helps heal the Hulk's arm, you know, from the damage he endured in Endgame. And of course, he destroys it because he doesn't want anyone else to get a hold of it. But we see that there are uh, groups trying to get a hold of the blood. The wrecking crew, of course, uh, comes after her uh, in a dark alleyway and tries to poke her arm and get some blood. Uh, and of course, when they don't get it, they're frustrated because they know that uh, the boss is going to be mad, right? Well, the boss is probably the intelligentsia. Uh, so the wrecking crew is hired by them uh, to get the blood. And actually, you know, there's a theory out there, and I kind of like it, that Todd is, uh, is a little more sus than we might have even thought. I mean, if you think about some of the things he said during the date that he went on with She-Hulk, he was asking her, you know, is your skin impenetrable? And could vibranium puncture it? And I mean, what creepy questions to be asking, unless, of course, you wanted her blood. And there's a theory out there that Todd might actually be the masked member of the wrecking crew there, because only one's got a mask on there. So very interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what, what they do with him as the series goes on. But the key is, there is great interest in Jennifer's blood. Well, sure enough, at the end of episode six, uh, someone, very likely the intelligentsia, is running some analysis to try to figure out uh, you know, how to get that blood and what to do with it. Notice there's a message there asking, is the next phase of the plan ready to go? And uh, it's from someone named Hulk King. You know, Very interesting. So uh, yeah, they are very interested in her blood. And we see that they've kind of moved to this next phase. Forget the wimpy little needle. They got some nasty needles uh, to try to puncture her blood and get, her, uh, uh, get some of it. Now, you might ask why. Why are they going after it? Well, if we look to the comics, one of the things the Intelligentsia did in the comics is created the Red Hulk. So, hmm, wonder if in this case, the MCU is going to pull that uh, thread from the storylines in the comics, and if that's why they're looking for her blood. We're going to have to wait and find out, but that is an interesting theory that, in fact, we may get more Hulks than just the Red Hulk out of this. So then that raises the question of, okay, well, who is you know leading this? Who is the big bad behind the Intelligentsia? Well, one very good pick would be the leader. We know that the leader, after 14 years of absence, is coming back to the MCU. It's been uh, stated that he is going to be one of the big bads in uh, Captain America 4. But it raises the question of maybe will we see him even before that? If you remember in The Incredible Hulk, uh, way back in 2008, uh, Samuel Stern was very fascinated by the Hulk's blood. He had vials and vials of it stored in his laboratory. Ultimately, some of it fell on his forehead there, and that's what turned him into the leader. And we haven't seen him since then. Now, there was a tie-in comic where he's captured by S.H.I.E.L.D., and of course, S.H.I.E.L.D. 
was really Hydra. So, you know, who knows what, what happened to him after that? I'm sure we're going we're gonna to find out. But wouldn't that be interesting if uh, the leader who was so interested in the Hulk's blood uh, years ago is still interested in the blood and has continued to be running analysis and, and, and trying to come up with ideas for what to do with it. So, yeah, I very well could be the one behind the intelligentsia. And maybe he's the only one. But if it's like the comics, then there's other members. So let's maybe just try to guess who some of these other members might be if potentially there are other members. Well, in the comics, MODOK is a key member. And we know MODOK is coming back in Quantumania. Now, interestingly, he's going to be voiced by Corey Stoll, uh, which Marvel could have just pulled him back in because they love his voice. But more than likely, they pulled him back in because Yellow Jacket isn't dead. Instead, he's going to somehow end up becoming MODOK. You know, if you remember at the end of the Ant-Man movie, he, he kind of just vanishes. We don't know what happened. We assume he was disintegrated, I guess. I, I don't know. I just assumed he was dead. But maybe he's not. Maybe not. Maybe he will be back uh, after a trip into the quantum realm. So then if we look to the comics, who else is on the team? Well, a key member is Egghead. And while we haven't met Egghead, per se, uh, in the MCU, we did meet him uh, under his true identity name of Elias Starr. He was the father of Ghost in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And if you remember, he was working on his own little quantum tunnel, which you know blows up and creates a huge explosion. And in the process, uh, Ghost, who is his daughter there, um, you know, gets her phasing power. But if you look at him, uh, Elias Starr there down in the corner, um, something strange. Like if we zoom in on that, you'll see his head seems to be glowing a little bit. So maybe some of that quantum energy struck him. And maybe he's not dead. Maybe he actually does become Egghead. Uh, in, in the comics, he's one of Ant-Man's uh, greatest villains, uh, although he is kind of cheesy too. But he's very, very, very smart. So he would fit in well with the uh, intelligentsia. And in the comics, he's a member of the intelligentsia. So there's another possibility. Who else might be? Well, if you think of other folks in the MCU that are really smart, Zola comes to mind. Now, uh, you know, presumably his AI was destroyed in, in the Winter Soldier, but I mean, it's AI, right? I guess it could still be around. And there was a what if episode that implied there were other copies of the AI out there. So yeah, what if he was part of the team? I uh, certainly would fit the idea of being a, uh, you know, very, very smart um, uh, criminal mastermind. Uh, so he's possible. And then another thought, because we know he's going to be showing up soon, could Dr. Doom be on the team? You know, and knowing Doom, he'll, he would betray them all at the end anyway, but he may still be interested in, um, you know, forming this alliance with other very highly intelligent uh, criminal masterminds. So long shot with Doom, but that would certainly be interesting. So bottom line, we don't know. Uh, we're going to have to stay tuned to see what, you know, crazy things happen with this team. Uh, if there even is a team, maybe it's just the leader. But I'd love your thoughts. Let me know down in the comics. Do you think uh, the intelligentsia is more than just the leader? In fact, do you think it even is the leader? Is he a member? And if, if there are more than him, you know, who are they? Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, and if you like the video, uh, go ahead and click that button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. There's lots more videos that you can watch. And in the meantime, we can all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.